because I'm humble, but a lot of people are not. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, I, I'm totally humble, too, by everything, but I am the Echo Johnson, yeah, and you I'm are the Barbara Echo Moore. Johnson. And I am so the Anthony Trawick. <laughs> and you yeah. Okay, good. Sorry. I guess- <laughs> You're listening to the Unframe of Mind Show, the place to have the most mind-stretching, unprotected intellectual intercourse of your life. Your hosts battle the forces of evil by lobbing fiery balls of truth, reason, and evidence over safe room walls. I like it. God, are you crazy? Kind of has that <laughs> librarian horrid. feel to it. Definitely be yourself. <laughs> like, we would expect no I less. I am sorry. That is horrible. Why did you say that, Echo? <laughs> because it looks good. Hurry up and sit your ass down. Jesus. This is very entertaining, and I'm leaving all of this in. Yes, please do. No, you should. Please do. Well, now, is, uh, in the beginning, now I'm a little nervous to talk about Trump. 30, 30, 30 years. years. to make fun of me? Oh, my God. No, they're not going to make fun of you. 30 no, years of friendship, and this is the real deal. Okay. All right. We're, real, we're rolling. All righty. All right. So welcome, right. welcome back to another episode of the Unframe of Mind show, where we have uncomfortable conversation. It's without a condom. I'm your host, Daniel Wagner. Hey, Anthony Trayway. And today, if you can tell, is our bathrobe edition. Yes. We decided we're going to invite a couple friends on. It's not just two guys in bathrobes. I know. That would be really weird. If it was just, a, <laughs> just a show of two dudes I mean, wearing bathrobes. I guess we could on our OnlyFans if we had one. I but, know, you know. That would be a lot of fun. <laughs> what are you waiting so, for? Uh, you can already hear him giggling in the background, so I might as well introduce our guests yeah, for, the introduce day, for the day. So I would like to introduce to you... A former guest of our show, and uh, she's, she's back again, Miss Echo Johnson. Say, welcome to the hey show. Hey, guys. Hello. Hello. We Hi. also have a new friend we've just made in the last 10 minutes or so, Miss <laughs> Barbara Moore. Yes, we are working on our friendship, and it's been fun. Yes. It's, I, I would say from our perspective, it's been a really rocky relationship. It's yep. kind of an on-again, off-again thing for the last 10 minutes or so. We may need to reevaluate this one. Yeah, I think we're going to no, be okay. No, we'll I o- love you yeah, guys. We'll be okay, I think, though. I love your show. I'm glad to be here, so thank you for we having me. We are definitely glad to have both of you on the show tonight. And, and y'all Thanks, look, guys. You both look fabulous. We're all wearing robes. You, yeah. you, you both look very yeah. fabulous in your robes. I got my drink. Let me, let me, but I gotta <laughs> really show you how it looks. Like this is a proper silk. Oh yeah, like it. Oh, I love that one. I have it's that one nice. too. That necklace. I love that one. I just have. I wore this because it's new from a fan. We love our fans. And yeah, this is a bodysuit. And but I have a robe on. We should do the show of of just them showing off their necklaces. <laughs> That's fine. Well, I want I, I want to tell you what this is, you guys, because this was really special. This was for the 60th anniversary um, event that we did, and it was 60 playmates, all custom fitted to the coveted bunny suit. And um, in our bags, they they gave us this, which is rare because usually we just have the bunny head, and it has like it says Miss January on here. Barbara says Miss December. Super oh, cool. Wow. So, yeah. just kind of want to get this conversation kicked off. Um, usually when we have guests come on the show, I do a little bit of research on everyone that we have. That way I'm a little bit familiar of who's who. And upon doing a little bit of research of Barbara, I learned and discovered that you had a little bit of a relationship with Donald Trump. So who's who's that? I don't know. I think he ran for president at one point and actually won. I mean, I could be wrong, but, (laughs) but anyways, just kind of want to talk a little bit about what, what kind of relationship did you have with Donald Trump? Well, I had a relationship where you're dating. That's how people describe what we had. We met, we would talk on the phone every night I was just a very young, brand new playmate, somewhat naive, very busy, echo. We were you know, the first ones put together for everything to go around the office of, of Playboy. So we were, right. we were very connected. So she was like my only friend in L.A., but she didn't even live in L.A. And <laughs> <laughs> so it happened so quickly. I met him right after I became a playmate. I was doing a fashion show. And... It was kind of like a little bit of a competition that night when the seven playmates were there in Atlantic City doing a fashion show because Donald Trump at that time, he was considered, well, Oprah on her show. She said that he is the most eligible Eligible. bachelor in America. And here he wanted to date me. So it's like, 
okay, now <laughs> like, I no probably pressure. wouldn't date him, but I did. But 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 tell him so. And what? No, but but no. No, what? tell them about tell them about how really the first time that you spent some time with him and um, he he took you down to Mar a Lago and then you said you called me and you're like, well, I don't want to go alone, so will you come with me? So I was 18, Barbara was is four years older than me, and we flew uh, I flew down there and met her and we spent a weekend at Mar a Lago, which all wow. drunk. it was pretty wild. Oh wow! Um, but so I you- think that's so your frame of mind when you're young, if you're smart, you want to bring a friend, even if it's somebody that America knows and the world knows, then you still, it just shows how like sweet we were and innocent we were and the girl next door we were that I would say, no, I I don't want to come alone. Can I bring my friend? And here, you know, we're brand new playmates. We're walking around Mar-a-Lago. We took all these pictures. Look right here. Look at it says all in my old photo album. (laughs) Wow. Barbara Moore, 1993 with Donald Trump. <laughs> so I've, I've got to ask, was this like just a platonic relationship where you just kind of dated, talked, and went out a few times? Or was this more of an intimate kind of relationship? And was he dating or married at the time? I was just kind of curious about No. That. Well, I he didn't wasn't need married. to ask that. I, no, he, he, he was... If you ask that, then it's kind of rude, right? So you just assume... No, but he, and, but he wasn't. He had just divorced Ivanka. Yeah, or uh, I, I, Ivana. Uh, wow, Ivana, I, yeah. I don't think he it's was Ivanka. eligible. <laughs> okay, okay. Here's how I felt yeah. at okay. the time. I met him, right? Because we all were doing a fashion show at, in Atlantic City. He was there, and right. we had a chaperone, BJ Turner, and we were having. It was like we were little girls, really. Anyway, he wanted me at the piano bar in his. Look at that! Suite. Look at that little Donald Trump right he wanted there. Wanted me, <laughs> so you know what? I felt like, wow, I'm the chosen one that the eligible bachelor wants. So of course, of course I'm kind of getting excited because he's all, you know, all over the press. And I could hear like playmates at the mansion. I was staying at the mansion a lot, doing shooting a lot. And I would hear overhear them say, Oh my God, I want to meet Donald Trump. Oh my God. You know? And mm-hmm. I just kept my mouth shut because if you do talk about things too much, well, loose lips sink ships. <laughs> Touche. That is true. That's very true. So you both or raise a sail, depending on which way you want to go with it. <laughs> so, so you both had a chance to meet him then when you went down to Mar Lago. You also got to meet yeah, him as well. We had every meal with him. Uh, oh, excellent. So I mean, uh, like, uh, okay. Except the one time that he sent us back to our to our room in our twin beds. Let me show you where we have to stay in twin beds. We had to go back <laughs> and it, to our twin and it, bed. But it's my fault because I got Barbara super stoned before we went to dinner and he had like a client there and she couldn't talk at dinner. And then we had to go back to our little twin beds. Oh, that was, <laughs> that was horrible. I asked her, I wasn't used to smoking weed back then. Okay. Oh, and I said, will this wear off? You know, by by the time we had to totally. go down for dinner, and it was still going to be daylight, like a beautiful outdoor dinner with Donald Trump, and just like the three of us, really. But the other couple was invited at the end. But oh my god, I she says, yeah, 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 it's going to wear off. It did not wear off. I was the most paranoid, <laughs> paranoid person. A, I was nervous around him anyway. Yeah, uh, I would she, imagine she came yeah. in on a later flight, and I had to golf with him. <laughs> I had to go around golfing with this guy and act like I knew what I was doing. But in retrospect, I'm thinking, why didn't I just act like I didn't know what was doing, what I was doing? Who cares, right? Right. But it was just, that was my mentality at the time. It's just weird. It's so weird that how many years later, almost 30 years later, newspaper people were at my door wanting my story. I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you guys. I mean, they. this is a story, fine, pay me. Right. And, and so they even, they even contacted me because somehow they knew that I had been at Mar-a-Lago and I literally had TM, what is it? Not TMZ. What is that other one? Uh, it's a big one from New York. And she showed, no, and she literally showed up at my door at my place in Newport. And I was oh, like, wow. what the fuck? And I'm, I'm like, I don't know what you want me to tell you. Of course he's a fucking playboy. He was single. And yeah, we did a lot of events with Trump and at, at his uh, casinos in Atlantic City. Of course he fucked playmates. Hello? Who wouldn't? <laughs> <laughs> so you, now you guys had dated briefly. It was, I think, what, about six months or so that you guys yeah. had dated? So yeah. what, what kind of ended that whole relationship? 
I had a journal and I do remember now, unfortunately I ripped it up because I then got a boyfriend and he read it when I was out of town. Oh. It was all about Trump. Good guy. I do remember writing. Yeah. How don't ever do that, men. Don't ever go into your women's journals. That's Absolutely. not for you. Absolutely not. That would have been very valuable to me now because you privacy. know, memories do fade, but I just remember how it was a feeling of power that I got from calling a person in the position of power and to have like every single time the secretary just patch me through immediately and that he calls me. It just it was really a big boost. A, you're getting a boost from becoming a centerfold of you know, yeah. self-esteem galore. Right. And then this guy is wanting to date you. So it's just this crazy time, isn't it? It's just really. Right. That was, it was fun. It was cool. But it's so weird to see how the people were reacting so poorly towards him. And I, my memories were good. My memories were like, he was very nice. I didn't feel like he was against any. Remember he had that couple who was designing his spiral staircase come to mm -hmm. dinner with us. And they were like from mm -hmm. Ohio and just, they were so, they were more nervous than me. The highest person on the planet earth that wow. almost <laughs> fell down on the cobblestone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, I can't so, move. So what, I, so what was it? From, Why? So, okay. So from your Barbara. experience, from your experience versus what, you know, modern media has painted this picture of this demonic possessed being or I don't know what 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 is the media got terribly terribly wrong do you think would you say in your experience I think the racism because he would be so nice to everybody and it just was it's not an issue I think hmm. that things come out of his mouth wrong but he really yeah. actually loves the person yeah. well I think he's an unfortunate I, I think he's a total egomaniac and but uh, that's not but that's not racist right 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 <laughs> No, that's not racist. I don't think he's racist. I think he's a, a total egomaniac. But he, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, he is, you know, a very smart man. He just yeah. has a very weird way of talking. And it sounds I would like agree. More it can be funny, but it can also be very hurtful. And I understand yeah. both sides. Maybe kind of sarcastic, yeah. kind of funny in a way or. Yeah, just, no. just not even thinking and saying it, but then later not see where the narcissism comes in is that later True. not saying ever, I'm sorry, oh, that okay. was wrong. Yeah. You know, never can admit fault. Now that right. is a turn off right there. So and that, I never got to know that side, but I see it now. So I had asked you earlier, like, what was it that just ended the relationship? Just kind of went on your different ways? She was busy. Or? She was busy. She was traveling. She was doing her thing. She's meeting new people. So it just basically kind of it dissolved itself. It's just like you don't spend a lot of time on it it kind of fizzles and it's not that big of a deal because it's not like my heart was broken right yeah but what was crazy is i never really put two and two together because echo is so right i was so busy with so much that meant so much more than that that yeah. literally 29 years after the fact on that interview with the uk the daily mail i found out why it ended they are on the interview <laughs> That he actually had gotten this Marla Maples pregnant. I'm like, really? <laughs> oh my God, no way! No. <laughs> Perfect. So, so he had the hot for Barbara, and then he had an oopsie and got Marla pregnant with Tiffany. So he had to say sayonara. <laughs> you know, and his daddy made him bury her, according to whatever the press. But whatever. It, you know, by then it was like fizzled, and who knows? I probably had a young hot boyfriend, which I think I did. You totally did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you were not. Yeah. That hair had to go. <laughs> right. But it well, was an experience. Well, I appreciate you sharing that, you know, with us. I wasn't trying to get too into your personal life and, and, uh, you know, I didn't want to come across too, um, I, I guess just too eager to want to know. But on the other side of that, it's like, I've never really discussed a conversation with anybody that's been close to Trump. So you kind of have those questions, you know, kind of brewing in your mind of wanting to know what it was like and, you know, if it was just dating, yeah. if it was more physical, you know, things like that. So, um, but kind of well, moving on from that. date and be physical. See, dating, it is a word for I'm going out with you. I'm in a relationship. We're dating. Like, what is dating? And I yeah. did ask you to be more specific mm -hmm. earlier. And you were not. 
So I'm saying, hey, do not be afraid to ask me a question. They right. were they were doing the they were doing the horizontal mambo. <laughs> 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 That's probably a good way to put it, I guess. Yeah, like whatever. It was what it was. I mean, like you you guys gotta think about it, you know, when you become a centerfold, I mean, it takes a lot of hard work to even get to that point and to even get approved. And and still, you might not even know. You could shoot your whole damn, whole damn centerfold and have to be like, yeah, no, you're not going to make it. Wow. So it's a really big deal when you do make it and you're very, very, very busy. I mean, you're traveling nonstop with the company and doing promotions. And that was that's what was so cool with Barbara. They, they paired us up on purpose. We just actually found this out recently. Um and we did all of our training together. We did all of our, you know, first introductions together. And we worked consistently together for years. And her and I and Carrie Stevens, and I, there's like one other thing that I can't think of. We were the ones that got to do all the international promotions. And that was like the Con Film Festival mm-hmm. and, you know, just all kinds of cool stuff. So you're meeting a lot of people. So it's like, who cares if you're like fucking Trump, like carry on, go fuck some other dudes. I never had a lifestyle that way. So I couldn't tell you. I, I'm sitting, I'm sitting here thinking, man, I'm mad. I mean, those kind of opportunities don't exactly present no. themselves to me. So it's they don't like, throw themselves our way. It's like, like how am I supposed we gotta to even, work for that shit? Dude? Like, how do you even like <laughs> put yourself in a it mindset? It is weird like because that. it is such a normal life. Not for, for everybody, us, yeah. but for Echo and I, because we were talking about having that uh, vending machine phobia. I made that one. Oh, up. yeah. And of people had, looking, people, watching every move that you make. When you're a child and you get, you can start noticing this and it becomes like a thing where you don't go near a vending machine because you don't want that eye attention. You don't want those eyeballs on you. It makes you uncomfortable. You really do feel that way and it sticks with you. And then. Right. Later on in life, you start realizing it and just having these podcasts and talking and just our wonderful friendship over the years, we figure out what the hell's wrong with us now. Wait, is this is this an argument for having vending machines that put the item up top instead of making you have to bend over in front of them? No, it, it, it's purely that realizing at a very young age that we were that beautiful joke. girls, <laughs> you know, and and we were bullied and we were called out and, you know, and all eyes were on us all the time. And it makes you like as much of an extrovert as I am. I'm very much an introvert and I can't stand right. it when people are just staring. I'm just like, what the fuck is your problem? Are you looking at <laughs> like, that they, reminds sometimes me you're staring with hate. Like the wit, yeah, with hate. Still to yeah. this day, hate us. We can't yeah. help it. I mean, that's yeah. a wonderful slogan. Don't hate me because I, <laughs> which, I don't know. Maybe I'm the worst lighting on the planet. I'll be right. I have no idea. But I, I do look forward I mean, to my trip I used to, to be able to say that. I do Depending look for- on the lighting, maybe I can say that right now. <laughs> I do just look kidding. forward to my trip to LA when I do meet Echo for the first time. I'm just going to yeah. stare at her. It's yeah, gonna- we're, we're probably. <laughs> Not, oh, gonna sit there like this that. Here's the move. We we go there. You stare at her longingly. I stare at her angry, <laughs> angrily. Just very awkward, like and, and, creepy and we'll, kind yeah, of way. Yeah, I'll make it kind of creepy. Very I'll, creepy. Oh, I'll constantly be like, I'll be like I'm behind a pole, like just partially all yes! the time. I, I'm just gonna yes! be like, I just stare Ew, at her. Stucker. I love it. Creepers. I love it. Hey, if anybody gets an award for being creepy, it's definitely got to be me. I don't know. I kind of run up there, but. <laughs> uh, stalker no, thing is weird, too. The stalker <laughs> thing happens later in life as well. The stalker, the stalker thing? Like, so, we're so, oh, yeah. Yeah, the these are, thing yeah. Yeah. It seems like. These are a lot now of everybody things wants that... to marry us. It, it seems it seems like from the outside looking in, like if you don't understand what it's like to be in the position you're in, it's like, well, I would just love to be them. That's so cool. They got to be in magazines and, you know, people, everybody oh, must love yeah. them. And but then you, like you start mentioning like constantly everybody's looking at you. Some people hate you because you uh, mm-hmm. achieved the status that you achieved. Um, stalkers and whatnot. Yeah. Good Lord. I, I can't even like, I, I'm already, well, here, I'm already, here, here, like, here's, just here's another, here's another one, here's another one Daniel. Oh, that is, is, it's something I'm experiencing right now with, uh, my fiance, his ex-wife hates me, oh. hates me. Really? Oh, 
And, and she thinks Playboy is this horrible, awful thing. And he also has a daughter that's my age. And she's from Santa Fe, where I grew up. And she has some beef with my sister from high school. I don't even know who she is. I don't recall her at all, right? But their daughter, I'm very close with their daughter. And she really loves me. And she was like, I'm so happy that you and my daddy are going to be together. And she goes, my mom thinks you're a bad influence. And I go, I know, oh. honey. And I'm, I'm not, you know? And it's oh. like, I mean, it's just endless, you know? I'm like, she's like literally trying to track down like every, like whatever she thinks is out there bad about me. And at the end of the day, there's nothing bad about me. Everything I've done, I consider art and it's out there. And she's a freaking makeup artist who works on movies and sets. And I'm like, bitch, whatever you do is the same thing that I'm doing. Like, what is your so, deal? I got to know it. Does she call you mommy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, who, wait, my daughter or my stepdaughter? Your stepdaughter. Did she yeah. call you mommy? No, no, no. She calls me Echo, but she actually, she was like, you're going to be the best stepmama. And I go, I don't like that name. Yeah. She goes, well, I'll come up with a cool one. And I was like, yeah, let's, let's come up with a better one. How about mommy Echo? Please, no, please, please yes, God, no, no, please God, no, 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 no. Hey, so I'm, no. I'm, 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 okay. I'm thinking about, Whatever. you know, like just your average, you know, high school girl next door, good looking woman, you know, just graduated or whatever. She's cute. She's probably getting DMs like crazy. I can only imagine having that uh, extra magnifying glass on you. Um, having With the Playboy? Yes. Um, actually, having a way more awareness in, no. in the male community. You're so more protected. Speak. Sorry to interrupt you, but. You become more protected by the Playboy family. Okay, so, tell, me, tell me about and that. And that yeah. really helped. Mm -hmm. That helped us greatly. Oh, can you imagine from having, having those, like, don't look at me. Can you imagine having DMs back then? So much. Back to, in the 90s. Wait, what did, wait, 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 Anthony, what'd you say, honey? That was Daniel. Oh, I was just asking, can you, or Daniel. Can, can you imagine back in the day having, like, Instagram direct messages? Oh, no. Oh, oh, like, God. thank God we didn't have all that. I mean, I can't. I mean, do you guys yeah, get that on I mean, social media you, you, now? You, do we what? Do you guys get that on social media now? No, the only time I got it was when I called out Holly Madison and I got tons of hate uh, messages from her fan base who are these dumb young millennials who take whatever they hear at face value because it's on Instagram or Facebook and don't want to research and figure out what the actual facts are. No, what I'm I've never... I've never had any, any, any of that. Everything on, on social media is from our fans and our fans are loyal and they follow us to this day and they love us and they are complimenting and they are adoring. And, you know, every now and then you might get like some weird DM and you just block them, okay. you know, but at the end of the day, yeah. no, no negative. Badly. Let me just tell you my little tiny one. Okay. But I mean, out of 29 years of being a Playboy Playmate, not that bad. Okay. It was when, because I'm Miss December, that I posted on Christmas my new layout from Playboy because they shot me 18 years later and I was proud of it. And I'm Miss December. And guess what? I'm Miss December 2010 again. Ha ha. So I posted. I was proud. There was some with clothes, you know, the high schoolers, the high schoolers were so mad at me. How dare you? Really? This wow. On Christmas, the holy day of Jesus. <laughs> oh boy. God is good. But that's it, really. <laughs> God is good. God is Look good. at us. God kissed us three times on the way out. <laughs> that's why I do hate you though. Um well, you know, I'd rather have what we have though. With all of that said, I'd rather have what we do have than not. Yeah, and, and actually, you guys, that, that's actually a really good segue into, like, Hugh Hefner and yeah. how he, he ran the company and, and what he expected out of you as a playmate and representing the company. Um, what was his philosophy on we, that? What's that? What was his philosophy on, like, was there a standard that the playmates had to meet to represent the company as a whole? Or was he not, was he kind of a little bit more laxed on that? Oh, no, he was not lax at all. So okay. it's interesting because so really all he would ever say at the end of the day is he wants a girl next door. But actually, we just found out on the show that, that we recorded, me and Corinne recorded with Barbara Moore and Carrie Stevens and um, Renee Tennyson and Brandy Roderick, who are two playmates uh, of the year. And um, 
they had some really good insight because of them being playmate of the year. They really had like a sit down moment with Hef. Mm -hmm. And he basically was trying to make sure that you would be up to par for the job because it's a big role to take on for playmate of the year. I mean, you're traveling around the world for a year. Before Echo, before (laughs) he said here is your title, he would have a little sit down with them. Well, yeah, because there would be like two to three girls in the running. Oh, yeah, you weren't in the studio when we were talking about that. And so oh. R- Renee told me at that, about that. Uh, Brandy was already uh, dating Hef. Um, right. They were boyfriend and girlfriend, and they actually had a really amazing, beautiful relationship. She talked about that, and I'll come out more on the show. Then she became Playmate, Playmate of the Year. And I know, right. and but drop the body shit so because she's one of the most gorgeous playmates and she just represent it, represents it on all levels. Great. But he, yeah. you know, like, like I would look at a girl and go, Oh my God, you're totally playmate material. And half would look at it and go, no. So you just really, he just had his own eye and he knew exactly what he was looking for. And a lot of it had to do, you better be smart and you better have personality. Like just being beautiful is not going to cut it. You know, I think that's why he loved to have a stance his home Mm -hmm. he can you really can get to know a person when you Mm -hmm. are eating dinner with them and just Mm -hmm. roaming around the halls and it was really like you absolutely that's his home there he is there don't touch his cookies so i kind of that's where i kind of want to go into next is what was life at the playboy mansion like when you walk through the doors how did people greet you guys like kind of walk us through an everyday life of actually living in the playboy mansion or even just visiting yeah, so so I want to actually start with this because when Barbara and I went into Playboy, Hef was married to Kimberly Conrad Hefner, okay. and they had they had those little boys, um, Marston and Cooper. And Cooper, I think, was six months old, and Marston was like maybe two. So when we went in, it was a family home. It was there was there was toys everywhere. There was nannies. Oh, wow. There was there was nothing going on, right? right? And of course, like we had heard about, you know, Playboy previously and the parties and this, that, whatever, but we didn't experience anything like that when we initially went in. And then 10 years later, when um, they got divorced and amicably, I mean, when they separated, she moved right next door in the mansion and they kind of joined it so the boys could go back and forth. But walking through the door, I mean, like you, you pull up to the gate, you talk to, you you know, security, they know that you're coming. They're like, Hey, welcome. You know, everybody's so nice. The butlers were so nice. I mean, it is really, truly a family. And that's what we're really talking about a lot on the bunny chronicles and, and just, it's reinforcing it even more. And the, the Testament, like the true, true Testament that speaks volumes is that from all the interviews that Karina and I have done, the least amount of time somebody worked there was 22 years. Wow. The max wow. was, was 55 years. Oh wow. Oh, yeah. Like, and the least and, 22. Wow. And, and there's a difference between the, the Playboy Mansion was its own entity and run its own by Huff. That was Huff saying his offices were there. And then there was Playboy Enterprises, the right. corporate. Yeah. So, but I I mean, don't you think, Barbara, it just, you felt at home there. I mean, there was nothing. You would go from the home to be picked up by Alexis Bobo, the makeup artist, zoomed off to the studio and you felt at home there too. Yeah. You went back home and it was just amazing. And it is so crazy. Everything Echo was saying about how long these people have worked there. Oh my gosh. These people. I mean, for years, they're the same people that were there 30 years ago greeting me and bringing me a tray of, you know, chicken nuggets and french fries at 2 a.m. I mean, (laughs) they're still there. There's got to be a reason. It's because of Hugh Hefner. Right. I mean, in this kind of a sexual entertainment, you know, sexy entertainment business, to not have one bad complaint about you or charge or arrest or mm-hmm. anything, mm-hmm. that is really amazing. Yeah, that does mm-hmm. definitely speak yeah, volumes to the kind of uh, organization that he ran for sure. And if he did touch you, well, you were, wow. I would yeah. let you yeah, touch yeah, me. Like, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> think about that. I've been a playmate for 10 years, um, but then you think, well, maybe I should have because I had a chance to be with him sexually. And, well, and I said, yeah, no, I mean, but I just, you know, I had gotten something fixed, you know, like a surgery. I was not feeling so well, you know, to be touched. But then at the time, I'm still, still, still feeling so, like, modest almost. 
<laughs> you have a lot of integrity and you think about this yeah kind of good for me it's not like just free sex at the playboy mansion i mean no. you, you really you really love yourself and they make you feel like you have mm -hmm. something special special and this changes your your life and i have interviewed playboy playmates i have a little uh side series on the podcast that i work on mm -hmm. life laughter happiness and i've interviewed about 25 i have not come across one playmate who has had a bad experience nope at all with no nope. hefner and the mansion or staying there right. there was one little thing about a photographer where a playmate said well he kind of like i felt like he, he wanted me i was so shocked but who cares well i well wanted you and that's not so, but you still went through with it. And, or, do you feel like you were abused? No, she didn't. So oh, I got to be honest. If I'm at the Playboy Mansion, I'm going to want everybody. Like, I'll even take you. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. I mean, I mean, and, and, and you know, like, like speak, speak, let's speak to that. You know, it's like, um, half, half was a very, was a man very much of routine. Um, right. and he liked things exactly as they, were and they would remain so and um you know seven nights a week it, it was like I, I have this written down it's actually going to be on our podcast but i think like uh tuesday night was like manly night where they would play gin rummy him and his 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 cro cronies is that how you would say yeah his cronies. <laughs> his, cronies. his cronies um and then it would be old like a uh, movie night but it'd be old Friday old movies night. from like the 20s and the 30s and the it 40s and night. And then there would be club night where he would go out with the girls. And then Sunday night or Sunday was Sunday fun day. You'd come up early. You did like hang out at the pool. They would have an early dinner buffet and then show a movie that had yet to premiere in the studios. And so that's the kind of oh, wow. like thing that you that you would be around. And the people that were there, we knew them because that was his group and that was it. And you knew everybody. It wasn't random, like a, a spinning door of all these different people coming in and out right down to the staff. You know, you knew all the staff, you knew all the friends and they were all just so respectful and like, and you just forged like really meaningful, special relations. You met so many incredible people, Barbara, also, right? I mean, yes. Also, there must have been a lot of women who came there who have maybe a, not a very good father figure or none at all here is a gentleman who he's he made a zoo for you you know mm -hmm. he has 24 hour anything you want you can order he yeah. hmm. makes you feel so comfortable there's a huge tanning bedroom oh my gosh that i loved and there was <laughs> i mean just me. so many things like jacuzzi <laughs> i mean just so many things that he cared and loved women it was mm. not just oh you because okay. you're beautiful but he loved all women and he respected them to from Mary O'Connor, who was his right hand woman for 40 years. Right. I mean, right. She wasn't a playboy playmate. And there was many women that he worked with. So he really admired women. He, he yeah. He, women. He, and he was an advocate of really placing. And this is this especially happened in the early 50s, 1953. He started the magazine. And um, I don't know if you guys have watched the Amazon documentary on Playboy. I have not. No. Um, well, you should because it's it's fascinating and it'll fill in a lot of blanks for you. And right from the get go, he was he wanted strong, intelligent, remarkable women in positions at the office. So he's a total, he has always been and will always forever be a feminist. He liked that. And, and he, he knew where you would excel and he knew where you would thrive. And if you weren't in the right position and you were in good with him, he would say, okay, let's try this and let's come over here. And he knew that would be it for you. you know, but he employed women from the beginning. And it's interesting <laughs> to hear that because on the outsider's perspective, I've talked to a lot of women, especially when I've mentioned that we were going to have playmates on the show. They're like, oh, God, why would you want to do that? I know. And I'm like, I know. oh, and, and then I'm hearing that he, he was trying to empower women and give them powerful positions within the company. And I'm like, it almost seems like there's this disconnect between the public and then the people that actually experience Playboy. Mm -hmm. And only if they yeah. knew, only if they knew really the what was going on. 
and how the company was ran, if that would change the perspective of the public. And it's one of the reasons why we're having you guys on the show is to kind of shed some light on things that most people wouldn't necessarily, you know, think about, you know, I mean, them and, and, it will change it. Yes, it will. Exactly. And, and Anthony, you know, you're, you're, you're very correct on that because unless you were an insider at Playboy and had access to Hugh Hefner, you had no fucking idea. All you what saw was, what was like. in the media and in the magazines and you thought it was one big orgy 24 no. seven. Yeah, right. That's, That's all no. you did, yep. you know? So no. No. He, he, he was all about monogamy and love. He was a hopeless romantic. I mean, he had many relationships in his life that were long standing relationships. And he was married for 10 years to Kimberly Conrad, never left the, the, the grounds because he was just so happy in his life and raising his little boys. I mean, it's such a skewed vision. And that's, you know, that is at the end of the day, what the Bunny Chronicles is, is here to educate everybody because it's infuriating, especially after the man is gone. And the shit that people say about him, it's like really like he's. Yeah, that is that is interesting because like Barbara has a question. Back then, you had the sorry. (laughs) No wait wait finish finish, finish, point as well. I have a question. Yeah, to you three, do you think there is something wrong with having an orgy at your home with? People that no. you like. No. 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 That's what you choose to do there behind your you closed go. doors. Exactly. That's exactly. what you choose to do. Exactly. I mean, exactly. If I'm in, the, part, in the grotto, in the grotto. <laughs> I mean, I got to be honest, if I'm not a part of it, I'm a little disappointed, but I'll, I'll carry on. <laughs> yeah. I think the show is almost over, but I mean, I did see it. It was a different time than when he was coming on to me. Okay. I just happened to go in there. Okay. It has to do with. St. Pierre, Monique St. Pierre from the 70s took me into his room. I'll be yeah. will, if you want to hear that story, we'll come back. Yeah, we'll come back to that. Right. <laughs> but wait, so Barbara, like I just told them now. to bring up, to, <laughs> to, to bring up. Yeah, we're all best friends. I just told them to bring up that um, you were based in Nashville as a flight attendant when you became a centerfold, and that's where they're based. Yeah, we're based out of Nashville. I forgot that you guys are, you're doing the show from Nashville? Correct. Uh, around mm-hmm. around oh, there. Oh, God. Yeah. Close. Close. Those people are so conservative, they would not approve of that modeling this sheer white. Are you kidding me? <laughs> For sure not. Are Things you, have are changed. You kidding me? Things have, have you changed. ever, have you ever yeah, been downtown been Nashville? <laughs> up to here. Wait, yeah. Wait, actually, speaking of Nashville, I have got to make a trip to Nashville. I'm dying. I keep reading about it so much. It's such a hot spot. It's so on yeah, everybody's radar. It, is. it reminds me of Austin. And I, okay, so I'm going to come there and you guys are going to host me. Oh, good God. The amount of right. things to do downtown with the bars and, and clubs can- and. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. Me, and Bob, me and Barbara will come. <laughs> the dynamic playmate duo. I tell you what. Playboy sent me and another playmate there once, and the 40th anniversary playmate. They sent us there. I hadn't been there in seven years, but since then I haven't been there, and that's a long time ago. But I do have Mac McClung, my ex-boyfriend. We stay in great touch. I mean, we meet in Vegas. He's totally cool. He's a billionaire now. He has a private jet and everything. He would love to have us come to his restaurant. Woo! Well, then, okay. Well, then Barbara, tell him to send a private jet for us because we're going to come to Nashville. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Sometimes we need you guys. Sometimes we need the in with. I mean, Nashville people would think, oh, "Wow, a radio show. Wow, they're famous." We, Here, we here's totally the thing: the playmates, they're not even. Yeah, they are actually <laughs> real. Have them send us a private jet. So well, here's the please. thing about Nashville. You have a lot of people, a lot of people from L.A. or California in general that have moved out here because it's just like Texas. I hate it. But I tell you what, the the downtown, I guess, nightlife here is unlike anything I've seen. Yeah, the only other wild. place that I could think it's of wild. is probably Vegas. But I think it's actually a lot better than Vegas just without the gambling. For sure. I yeah, mean, Ve- Vegas is overrated. Do they sell the Ace of Clubs? That club, the Ace of Clubs, right there on the river? Do they still have that? I don't think so, no. Uh, oh my gosh, I do want to go to Nashville so badly, and I know... Well, let's go. Well, you've let's got, go. You've got so music many country here. music oh, artists <laughs> that have actually opened up their own bars out here. Kid Rock has a place. Good. Georgia, Florida Good. Line has a bar out here. Oh, cool. um, I mean, there's just so many different celebrities that do... And it, when you go down there on a Friday and Saturday night, 
it is so crowded of everybody going to the honky tonks and restaurants yeah. and yeah, I mean, it's like it's I like a party it. that just does step. not stop. It's insane. I love it. So. I to do the two step. Or yeah, do you guys do two step? I want to do it. I don't know, but I mean, hell, I'm willing to learn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, well, what, well, you guys didn't even know this, but Barbara is a world-renowned ballroom dancer champion for years. Oh, wow. She's a professional dancer. She knows how to do everything, so she can teach us. Good Lord. She's I'm an always, amazing. I have I zero dance it. move. I have one dance move, but that's I've, all I have. I've always wanted to learn how to dance like that, and I've, al- I've always wanted to do the... Um, uh, what are the, what is it like? The swing. Sal- no, the salsa swing. dancing. Sal- salsa? Yeah. yeah salsa. Just something very sexy and exotic and just. Yeah. I've always been Blah. into the pop and rock oh. stuff. That stuff is so, so I, I watch people do that stuff that, uh, break dancing and I'm like, that's such skill. You want to do that? Skill. But the thing, yeah, but the thing it's is, super, I, I'm super impressed when I see people doing it. I'm like, how do you, how do you, it's you amazing. Your, how do you move your body never like that? Day. Yeah. The <laughs> thing is though, is I've, dance. I've never, I've like. The people I've dated have never really taken an interest into that, so I kind of like just hung it up. You know, I just haven't really kind of explored the idea of you know learning how to dance. Now, when I was married to my ex-wife, we took dance lessons for like a week. Good, good. Like a week, <laughs> but you're not gonna learn anything. No, in a week. Oh, one, oh, one week. No, you yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> one week is one, one lesson. Wow. No, and I'm I, and I'm like I want to actually learn how to do this, you know, because I've gotten to yeah. a point. I've gotten to a point in my life where I want to try new things. And absolutely, one of the things that I've been doing now is boxing. I took up boxing. That's really cool. But now I'm. I, I either want to go skydiving or I want to, <laughs> you know, take up dancing or just no. something different. Just something that is just that most people that you know just do not do. You know, Anthony. And- I I love that you are talking about that, and I will tell you this: if a man knows how to dance with a partner, it's it will it blows a woman's mind. So do that. I mean, it's the coolest thing to be able to do I, with a I, partner. I rely on my sense of humor and cooking skills. <laughs> well, I just rely on my voice to get what I want. You know, oh, that's, that's very good. <laughs> I don't have that well, here's the thing: the dancing, what it does for a person is when you are learning with your instructor or in a class during that time, you're not thinking about anything else. You're not thinking about your problems, anything else except for that. And it really is therapeutic. And it is one of the only things proven to make sure that you don't get Alzheimer's because that's true. I think yep. so. like your motor skills and your brain yep. it makes yep. you do so much at the same time. That sounds so, like the same let's kind. Let's all do it. Can yeah, that we come sounds to like Nashville and go to it. Oh, I would love to have you guys come to Nashville. Yeah, actually, so yeah, we'll all be in the same kind of level. So the way you're describing, yeah, it so, sounds so, like so, the same thing. Like when I'm in the studio, just like I'll turn on a bunch of songs and sing along with them, like that kind of like you're not thinking yeah. about anything else. You, you zone focus, out and, and, and you're zoned oh into God, what you're and, wanting to listen and to. And I just I just need that yeah. sometimes. Come yeah. out here and just like it's a meditation. Mm-hmm. It's it's crazy. Well, for me, it's fishing. I I love my quiet time, my my me time. And when I need that to kind of decompress after I've worked a bunch and, you know, dealing with family stuff and, and just everyday, just life. I, I don't, yep. I'm, you would think that I'm not very much of a people person. You wouldn't think that given the show that we do, but I like to be alone. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I Me love too. it. Me too. So, this is our outlet though. I go yeah. out, I go yeah, out, exactly. I go out to the lake and I'm out there for hours and I turn off my phone. I, I don't like to be interrupted, and I just go out there and I fish. You know seems, that. Yep, I mean, <laughs> yep. Seems like we have a room full of introverts today. <laughs> but if I if I need to be more outgoing, I can be that person. Yep. Our, our, oh. Seems like our friend Miss Barbara has got to go. She's got another engagement to go. She's to leaving well. us oh already, God. and we just got a chance it's to get our, to know it's her. Our own so, podcast she's going to people. I see how it is. So we want to tell us about that podcast um, first before I tell you yeah. something. Whatever I'm going to tell you is I just wanted to thank you guys. I had so much fun. And I actually did feel so comfortable that I told some things that I've never even told. So I can't wait to, you know, hear it back. And I love Echo. She's my playmate sister. She's the, like, the closest Mm -hmm. of the close. And I, Mm -hmm. I'm so happy for her with the Bunny Chronicles and everything she's doing to show everything that playboy is and the well it's only positive 
Absolutely. You know, I love what that. she's doing. And yeah. what I am doing, I have a, a podcast that I work on. When I first came, it was a spiritual. They had a spiritual base, right? Paranormal, spiritual. Well, since I've come along, I've turned it into a variety show. But <laughs> since we, you guys were talking about all of this, I wanted to invite you to come on every single Friday, which is today. At 5 o'clock, we have I Wanted Her. I like, okay, I've probably interviewed about 100 psychics. <laughs> That was their thing, you know, in three years I've interviewed these people. I like this one, Dale Shear. So she's going to be on. I'm going to go on at 5 o'clock, 5 to 6, and that's the only day of, week, of the week that we actually take callers. Right, As exactly. Knows. <laughs> <laughs> that ought to be entertaining. Yeah. Well, I love the, no, I, I love the fact that you want us else, on, a, on your show. No, you know, me. So. Well, it, it's not it, it's not it's not even about being on the show, guys. It's about just calling and talking to the psychic because it's kind of interesting what she says. But so I pulled a big old prank on Barbara about a year ago, <laughs> and I texted her and I said, "I'm going to call into the show," and she had no idea. Oh, and you did not what, even warn me, girl. <laughs> yes, I did, and you didn't see it. So then I so then I call in, and and I'm like. Uh, so I'm going to speak in my native tongue, which is northern New Mexico, and I'm a minority there. So don't get offended, all you like woke people. It's not a joke. It's actually real and truth. So I called in and I was like, hey, this is Lisa Lita. And I was just wondering if the energy is <laughs> That is so you good. You can find it on my YouTube channel. But <laughs> yeah, it's, hey. it was stupid. We need a new, we need a new call that I had to cover up. I had to cover it up because these people, when they call it, it was not the psychic that I have on. I could do the friend. voice it that I do. a different one. They were <laughs> she's so serious. And hey, she's man. so, like, worried that somebody's going to make fun of her. And that's a bad thing. <laughs> Tell me what the psychic is telling you, man. Excellent. Shit, well, man. And I had to cover it up. And Barbara's like, okay, well, I don't know, because then I was like, well, orderly wing, tell me, Barbara, how can I be a teammate? <laughs> I was just so glad that she had a great character, that she kept no. her character going, because that made it easier for me to cover it up. <laughs> if awesome. she was like, well, awesome. Deco, they would have been like, well, if this is what is going on, yeah. then bye-bye. <laughs> They're so like, later, like women all the time, because I do a regular show. Okay, like, it's not always about play point. You should have heard when I said, hey, well, Johnny, Johnny's my co-host. He says, well, Barbara, you have a uh, Playboy Playmate, so you're friends. I want to have them on. They put a big stink up. And I go, let's just have three on. Let's have three on this for the next couple of months, you know? Ease into it. That's all I wanted. They actually raised such a stink that they were fired. They were fired. What? And I have my own. So I just wow. got, <laughs> I just out. so makes your life better. You just have to stay in stay in the game. Don't give up. Don't don't hey, give up. So Barbara, I just got your text that says, Do you guys not want me back in? I'm always gonna want you back in, sweetheart. Uh, we love having you on. It's <laughs> well, been a real I pleasure. I was trying to get back in a few times, but it's okay. I'm gonna let you <laughs> Yeah, that's a whole other story, and I'm not going to talk about it. Barbara can do that one. <laughs> and I just got a, an alert from my show that says, yeah. "Good well, morning." We know you have to go, Barbara. We know you have to go. But thanks, you guys, and I love you. I wanted to show you some of the things I've done, and when things were just different back then, right. you know, it's very yeah. sweet, great girl next door. <laughs> stuff hey i'm still able to make money off of it and i'm happy thank hey, you there you go. And I'm exactly oh i'm gonna exactly channel. hey echo i'm gonna yeah. channel him come on yeah yes, right now do that hell yeah because i know he's in our studio all the time when I, we feel him and he's like yes girls i'm with you i'm pushing this through i, found I love the it best medium i'm the psychic that's on she's not a medium talk to him, Friday, talk to him. Medium where they talk to the dead, you guys. Yeah, I'm gonna do that on the show because that's what we're really kind of known for. We're on blog talk radio, life, laughter, happiness, and I also am launching my own show, which I've done a few episodes for. Which are things that I feel like I want that 
because you don't have to know, but whoever they bring. Does she realize she's late for her show? Hey, you're already late. But, no, but I want to do my own thing. So it's called it's called the Barbara Moore Show, as it should be. Because when everybody, when anybody ever asks me about Barbara Moore, and I'm like, there's really no way to explain her except she's just Barbara Moore. Yeah. <laughs> like, it is what it is. I like it because I think, well, who am I to say it's the Barbara Moore Show? Because like who? Because I'm humble, but a lot of people are not. Oh humble. God, yeah, I, I'm totally humble too by everything. But I am the Echo Johnson, yeah, and you I mean, are I'm the Barbara Echo Moore, Johnson and I am the Anthony Trawick. <laughs> and you, yeah, okay, good. Wagner. Sorry, I gotta- bye. Love you. Bye. 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 Right. Call, call, call. See you, Barbara. Love you, bye. Call, call. Okay. You got to go, Barbara. Thank you for being such a wonderful guest. And we're gonna pick um, on Echo love you. for a little while. Yeah, we're gonna pick on Echo. So. Bye, guys. Um, we look forward to having you back on the show, hopefully in the future. Thank you. I would love to come back. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> Bye, Bye, baby. Bye. Bye-bye. Call me when you're done. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 told, I told you guys she'd be awesome. Isn't she fun? Yes, oh, she's great. Absolutely. What, what I really like to get into is, is try to explore more of the conversations of what people may not know about Hugh Hefner. Um, yeah, that's what I'm more interested in. I mean, you always hear the stories, the documentaries. I want to know things that have okay. never been told before. That's okay. that's what I want. So, so, so five, four, three, two, one, go. Um, so one of the biggest things that that Karina and I have found out from doing these series of interviews over the summer, and I can't believe we literally recorded everything from May. It was like, we're doing it, started in May, and we finished at the beginning of September, and I keep, like, pinching myself like it's here. Um, But I had no idea, like, the level of philanthropy that Hef um, was involved in and um, just really, like, his moral compass and, like, the fundamentals on which, like, he lived his life and operated his business has been really, truly profound and definitely just from the interviews we've had, you, you just really get to realize even more from, you know, these employees that worked there for decades and they worked side by side with half. And, you know, at the end of each show, we, we asked, you know, them, like, if you could say anything in memoriam to half or, you know, before he passed, what would you say? And 90% of the time, it's just a simple, like, thank you. Thank you for taking me on this journey. Right. Um, so philanthropy was huge and, and, and in a lot of different areas, but the HMH foundation and anybody can find that online, the HMH foundation is solely 100% dedicated to first amendment rights, which nice. ooh, raw, we love yeah. that. <laughs> right. Um, and he was obviously a huge advocate for civil rights. And that is very, um, really seen like in the 60s early 60s i would say probably that decade is when he started playboy uh it was called the uh penthouse after dark or playboy penthouse after dark and that's when he would it was a black and white show and he would host incredible musicians i mean we're talking about anywhere from like come on throw me out some names like um I don't from know. <laughs> from like Davis. from uh, like Sammy Davis Jr oh, with wow. a with a white vocalist or um uh Miles Davis I mean and he would he would mix all these people together and people would watch it and be mortified that oh my god there's a black person and a white person together, oh my god you know i, I keep forgetting yeah that. you know I, i'm s- I born that's in a 80, different time so yeah completely different i was time. born in 81 so <laughs> like like the, the the years that i grew up in the dating world for example like black and white couples mixed couples and stuff was kind of like almost ubiquitous there was still a little bit of hesitancy yeah. about it but for the most part it was just like i don't give it I don't give well a i dated I a black girl that. back in high school and that was very frowned upon but it was probably the area in which i grew up in which is mount juliet mm. but, which is the south and that's yeah. going to be predominant there forever right. unfortunately but I don't no, know. I don't I, think so. I don't know. It's. I think it's things. Things have changed quite a bit. Oh yeah, they've changed quite then, a bit. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, well, when you, you bring up you, these things, it just, I, I, it's hard to think. It's hard. It's hard to put, kind of put myself in that mind space. Like this used to be a big problem in society. Like people used to like clutch their pearls the same way nowadays people are clutching their pearls if you use the wrong pronouns and we're <laughs> yeah, going right. to be laughing about it 20 yeah, years yeah, from now. Yeah. 
Or like, like, what the hell is this now? When I go to fill out anything, it's like pronouns, and I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? I know, like, I'm a really great writer. I got an A on every creative writing paper I did last semester, at OCC, just for the hell of it. And I'm like, the pronoun, like, what I'm gonna have to refer to, like, I'm a he, she, or she, or her, or like, wh- why does it have to go to this level, you guys? Ooh, let's actually talk about this month's cover a playboy with a yeah you TikTok told me about that male yeah. on yeah. the cover I've seen that <laughs> and and i actually heard a really good defense for that um I, I, there's a defense oh, for oh, that. oh 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 wait it, oh my god okay go ahead go say your defense and i'm That's, ready no, no, let's it's, go it's not my defense it's it's just a defense i heard that was pretty pretty good um from a business standpoint and the business standpoint is this um Playboy, as as the magazine, is kind of on its way out. I mean, nobody's really buying it for the models anymore. Um, I don't know that anybody's... I don't know how popular... I don't know how... Anyway, so what you do is you do something completely over the top that people are going to hate. But then again, a lot of people are going to really love it and they're going to think they're so forward-thinking. And you're going to create controversy. And controversy creates sales because then now you have people looking at your magazine all of a sudden where uh, they weren't looking at it before, but now they're even if they hate looking at it, they're at least curious. It was an interesting perspective, but, but it, it does make Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Let me shut you down right there, okay? It's, again, it's not and, mine. Oh, it's not mine. And, and, no, I, no well. I know, and I know that you read that, and I get that, and that's exactly what they're trying to do. But let me preface it with this, okay? Playboy, the company, was bought seven years before Hef died, right? And at that time, you could kind of start to see different changes within the company. And there was definitely a lot of people that were let go and, and really like let go in a very ill manner. And these were people that worked there for decades, et cetera. Um, and my understanding is that it was all an agreement that, you know, once have passed that the magazine would maintain its caliber of what it is, you know? That's what it is. And so when Hef died, his son, Cooper Hefner, which is the youngest one, he had already been at Playboy at the company and um, stayed on as the, um, it was like the creative director or the chief financial creative director, something like that. And it was very clear once Hef died and how expeditiously they just said, okay, that's a thing of the past. Rest in peace. Hashtag rest in peace. Hef overdone. No memorial, no celebration of life. Nada. Done. Okay. And, and Cooper, you know, soon like quickly realized like, okay, this is not at all going to go and, and, and online and what I grew up knowing and what my father has created. So I'm out. And so he left and he went to the Air Force and his father also served. Hugh Hefner also served in the Army. And that was kind of a homage to his father, which was very cool. So when he left, there's no Hefner name attached to it. OK. Mm-hmm. And what these idiots, this woke playboy idiots and i have no problem saying that i'll say it all fucking day long because i am trying to cause a storm with them um they basically have shit completely all over the history and the man of hugh hefner and who he was what he created, the fundamental, like incredible founding moments of the decades in history that were so like pervasive and so, you know, like groundbreaking that he was like willing to approach always. And, and it was never like, it was never like black or white. It was always like, let's just be objective. Let's get it out there. And the readers can decide on their own. Right. So I see this, this, cover all right so it's so it's the classic story the get woke go broke and and as far as you know from from my perspective i totally agree with what you're saying it's it's just they're trying so hard to be so forward thinking and so progressive at, that, right that, and, and, like and, and, and and it's like a, at what that. cost of canceling out like the legacy of what Hugh Hefner created and this and then so I went on to, um, I mean, I was pissed when I saw it and I, and I went through all the comments and 99% of the comments were like, what the fuck is this? Playboy is playboy. Like this has just gone too far. Like you're doing this just to be woke and like, like reach a broader audience. And the biggest problem I had with it, Daniel, is it takes away from us, from playmates of like, 
that was a very, very difficult thing to attain. And it was a very huge honor. And it was profound when you were chosen and when your magazine came out. And now uh, we can just have some TikTok influencer wearing the coveted bunny suit, by the way, which the bunny suit also, that's a whole other topic. They didn't just have whoever in the bunny suit. Mm -hmm. And that was a very difficult job. To have that was just in such poor taste and just totally shit all over half. And that's the majority of what those the, the comments were. So I then went on to Twitter and I said at Playboy um, and said, um, as opposed to this completely um, – ill thought out cover that you have this month of a TikTok influencer, you should actually be running this picture. And there's a picture of half with the 60 bunnies, all the playmates, they were all playmates dressed as bunnies for the 60th anniversary at the mansion on the front lawn. It was the last time any of us saw him. It was the last time any of us were there. So I had somebody uh, reply to me and, and actually I got a ton of followers from that. Like I'm organically, oh, wow. our social media profiles are really blowing up and Excellent. that's exciting and happy that it is organic. But this uh, fan responded and I don't know who, who he is. He's a French man. He's a photographer. And he said, he, he agreed and he said, it is, he said, it's so sad because only in the U S are they doing this? And I said, well, what do you mean? Hmm. And he sent me a picture of this month's cover of the Russian Playboy. That's what the hell the cover should look like. It is progressive. It is forward. It is edgy, but it's still that glossy mag with a beautiful woman. So come to find out that it, so Playboy is licensed in countries around the world, right? And so they make their own publications, whether it's Spain or France or Italy or whatever. You have your own publication right, right. with your language and whatnot. So the rest of the world is following the same context and carrying on the legacy of what Hugh Hefner has done. But in America, where it was founded, these idiots, whoever's running the show, think that's a smart idea. And it's all about like, yeah, let, let's just let's just make as much money as we can right now but of this woke movement or include everybody. I'm sorry. Right. There's no inclusivity in this. A man is not meant to be on the cover of Playboy, nor wearing the bunny suit, nor be a playmate. It just that's not what it is. Tell me how you really feel. You can tell how I feel. <laughs> That was a joke. It pisses yeah, me it off. It really does. Yeah, absolutely. Because it, it kind of. And you can understand that, right? Yeah, it is a, ends up kind of a, a slap in the face to you as well. Totally. Like, all the other. Totally. Absolutely. And I get. I totally get it. And it's kind of grotesque, if you're asking me. I mean, I. It's gross. I mean, you're, that's what I said. I said this is gross. That's exactly what I said. This is gross. Yeah, like, I mean, who wants to see this? Your core, your <laughs> core audience, the core people that actually do support playboy as a magazine who do buy the magazines who are loyal to it they're not exactly going to be the kind of people that are going to look at that and go oh that's hot i need to get to the <laughs> they are, like now they are, yeah, like, they are straight men that is who's like, buying I, that. absolutely I, I would look at that magazine and be like what the fuck uh no i'm not totally. buying this month's magazine that's for sure yeah oh, yeah so 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 when I saw all of those comments, the first thing I wondered was like, I wonder if Playboy's like even looking at this and even gives a shit or they're just like, well, whatever. I, I it's, suspect it's a brand. I suspect in the sales numbers this month that, that, that may tell the, all the story we need to, to see. And if they end up like totally tanking in sales numbers, um, maybe they'll get the message well, that, oh, this maybe yeah. wasn't. Maybe people aren't as quite as ready for this quite a, a, a large step in the progressive movement just yet. Okay, but but Daniel, like, can't you agree on this level that no, they're no, like, no. like, <laughs> yeah, you sh you 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 close your eye when you talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, this whole woke thing, I'm I'm down with that because I can certainly say, just personally for me, like, I have been elevating on a lot of levels, and really since I turned forty, like, I feel it, you know, and. I am proud that, you know, people are waking up and, and acknowledging, you know, wrongs that need to be made right. 1000%. That is the way I teach my daughter. That is the way I live. But at the end of the day, inclusivity does not apply to everything. 
And so what they're doing is pushing women out. But now like, oh, like, oh God, like, fuck you guys. Like, oh, you're a sex symbol, playboy, playmate. No, we need to have like a gay TikToker influencer on there. That is wrong. You know, there are some things where the woke movement does not need to be pushed for their agenda. And that is a prime example. I do. Th- I do believe you and I are on the same page. A hundred percent. Thank you. This particular topic. Thank you. And listen, I, I appreciate you sharing that with, I, I, I love to, I, I have not, I've heard a lot of different perspectives on this particular thing through different uh, shows I listen to, but to hear it from somebody who was actually part of that entire organization, like that means a whole different, like that, that's just says so much more yeah, than thank I could you. have gotten from anybody else. So I, I do appreciate you sharing that with us as well. Thank um, you. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. So thanks guys so much. It was super fun to be on here and I'm glad we had Miss Barbara Moore and um, yeah, she yeah was, the Buddy Chronicles. She was awesome. I, I have, I, I, I still can't put my finger on her. She seems like a whole totally different kind of person that you've never, <laughs> she you've is. never met anybody like Barbara Moore. That's for sure. And that's a good thing. No, exactly. I, I, I love, exactly. I love that's- individual personalities. Like I can't stand the NPC type culture where everybody just kind of blends into each other and uh, it's, it's yep. so frustrating. I want to see people with some no. personality. So yeah, no, to- totally agree on that. I mean, it just makes it's just so much more fun to have like unique uh, individuals and personalities. And you know, why does everybody have to be this like fluid, like cohesive, all one yeah. in the same? Like, no, thank you. I'm not good with that. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I appreciate having you on, uh, and and I look forward to doing it again, of course. And I'm sure I speak for Anthony, and and he would probably say the same thing. Um, so yeah. do you want to tell folks where they can reach you again if they for- maybe forgot from the last episode? Yeah, 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 for sure. So um, the Bunny Chronicles is launching. Um, well, actually, probably w- will be launched by the time this uh, show airs. So the Bunny Chronicles podcast, um, you can find it at patreon.com forward slash the bunny chronicles you can also find that on onlyfans.com forward slash the bunny chronicles and we have our instagram um profiles obviously bunny chronicles vodcast and the reason is vodcast is because we have live uh streaming videos in the studio as we're doing it or you can listen to it on your favorite audio platform uh so bunny chronicles vodcast on ig echo bunny 93 on ig and karina harney pmoy on ig and it's just going to be a deep dive into and and just paying tribute to hugh hefner and playboy and what he did socially and culturally the changes that he was responsible for from creating the magazine uh, uh, playboy because lord knows playboy magazine is not keeping his legacy alive somebody has to do the job. <laughs> yeah <laughs> all Thank right you. all right echo i will see you next time All right, Dollface, I appreciate you guys. Have a good one, okay? This is Barbara Moore, and you're listening to The Unframe of Mind. Uncomfortable conversations without a condom. (laughs) You heard (laughs) I like that. I love it, ladies. Thank you so much.